Welcome to Morningstar. I'm Holly Black. With me is Alan Good. He's an equity analyst at Morningstar in Amsterdam. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So we're here today to talk about Saudi Aramco, which recently listed on the stock exchange, uh, the biggest listing of all time. Can you tell us why all the anticipation and why that huge valuation? Yeah, there's been some uh, interest in Saudi Aramco going public for some time. Um, primarily because of its size. It's one of the, it is the largest oil and gas producer in the world at about 13 million barrels per day, 10 of which are crude oil. Uh, and so the size alone merits the high valuation. Uh, when you're talking about a company that size, it's naturally going to translate into uh, high value. Um, but the interest is largely around curiosity, not so much as an investment opportunity. Um, Aramco and Saudi Arabia historically have been rather relatively cagey about uh, operation, operational data. Uh, and so the fact that they're going public means that they've started disclosing a lot more data around the quality uh, and the size of the reserves. And so that in and of itself has attracted a lot of interest as well. OK. So when we do think about this from an investment perspective, what are the positives? Yeah, I mean, the positive is that uh, by buying into Aramco or investing in Aramco, uh, you are investing in the lowest cost resources in the world. Uh, so that is certainly an attractive proposition. In fact, in our methodology, it merits a wide moat. It's the only wide moat producer of oil and gas that we currently cover. Uh, the second thing I would say is around the dividend payout. Um, so while most dividends are reliant on cash flow, uh, Aramco's dividend uh, certainly is reliant on cash flow. But for minority shareholders, uh, there is a protection mechanism whereby if the cash flow is insufficient to cover the dividend payout, uh, currently at a $75 billion total, uh, the government, the majority shareholder, will actually take a hit um, and cut their dividend. Uh, so in effect, uh, regardless of the level of cash flow or oil prices, minority shareholders are essentially protected on the dividend front. So it is, in a sense, a, a guaranteed dividend payout, which is something you uh, rarely find, if ever, uh, in the oil and gas space. It's definitely appealing for an income investor. So do you have any negatives or concerns about the stock? Yeah, I'd say the first one is valuation. Uh, you know, we valued the shares at uh, 26 reals. Uh, the offering price uh, initially at the IPO was 32. It subsequently rallied about 10 percent as well. So uh, we do see shares currently is uh, overvalued. Uh, the second thing would be around governance issues. Um, while we do rank um, Aramco with a standard stewardship rating, that's really around their capital allocation. Uh, if you are investing in Aramco, you should know that you are a minority shareholder uh, and that the government ultimately will making, be making the decisions. Uh, there's certainly some issues around that where they've tried to address, such as using Aramco uh, to complete infrastructure projects within the country, uh, around pricing of domestic natural gas and NGLs, and around also around actually setting the absolute production volumes for Aramco. So uh, minority in investors should know that if they do get the opportunity to buy an Aramco, they should be aware that they will be taking a backseat to the government. Uh, but ultimately, the government has worked to address some of that through changes. So uh, just be aware if you ultimately do become an investor. But I suppose that is one big question, is how do you become an investor? Because it's not that easy to get access to this stock, is it? Yeah, right now it's only listed on the local Saudi exchange, uh, which does limit access uh, to those who are authorized to own stocks on the exchange, which really cuts out most retail investors. Uh, it's likely that Aramco will be added uh, to some global indexes. Uh, so you may be able to get exposure through there. But I would uh, expect them at some point in the future to eventually list uh, on an international exchange, whether it be in Asia or Europe or maybe even the U.S., although that's remote. So uh, if you are a retail investor and you are interested in uh, buying into a Ramco, uh, I would just be patient. I think at some point they will list internationally and that should give you uh, an opportunity. And you say uh, it could become part of some indices. So for retail investors, that means it could end up in an ETF or a tracker fund. Yes, yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the size alone. And so any um, any index that uh, focuses on global equities and includes the Middle East or even Saudi Arabia, for that matter, uh, is likely to add it to the portfolio. Alan, thanks so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for joining us.